There is a man sitting here in this room with us today, a man that I'm sure all of us know pretty well, but just how well exactly do we really know this man? Perhaps the Dunn we know isn't the full picture. I've got to work with Dunn for many years in a row now, producing the annual Christmas film every single Christmas, and there's a lot you learn about people when you get to work with them. Things that you didn't know were there, things that surprise you. Now that Dunn's a big boy making big bank with his big boy job, he didn't have the free time to get involved in her yearly chicanery this time, so this year I wanted to dedicate the video to the man himself, Alexander Dunn. And tonight, I, James Llewell, filmmaker and good friend of Dunn, decided to do something a little different. Tonight, we learn all about the man, the myth, the legend that makes this Christmas party possible every year. This is Done, the documentary. <laughs> Dunn was born in Nova Scotia in 1995, and there he would grow up and meet tons and tons of different people. And I know when you hang out with a variety of people, you oftentimes expose different parts of yourself to each different friend group. To some people, Dunn might be the smart guy, and to others, he might be the wacky guy, or the speedrun guy, or the deli guy, right? So to better piece together what exactly this guy is all about, I decided to interview as many of Dunn's friends as I could to see what exactly Dunn looks like through their eyes. Picture a man. You're picturing Alex Dunn. First impressions are important. Your first interaction with somebody can greatly affect how that person will perceive you as long as you know them. So I decided to start up with a very simple question. So uh, tell me how you met Alex Dunn. Sorry, who? Crazy story. Uh, love that guy. So uh, last year, grade eight, we were in Miss Sterling's class. Uh, so it was the first time I got to meet uh, all, my, all my cool friends. Um, so I was sitting there, uh, uh, Alex was there. Uh, and then Alex, oh, so many Alexes, my bad. Alex Chisholm was also there. So the year's 2001, right? I'm sitting there, Miss Corbin's primary class, just chilling, you know, doing my homework, whatever I'm doing, practicing my cursive writing. I look in the corner and there's this kid sitting there. He's picking his nose by himself. And I walk over and I say, dude, what are you doing? And I made fun of him. And um, now he's my best friend. It was it was it was one night where uh, we we were finishing up some filming. I forget which uh, film we were doing, but uh, back then you guys were like wrapping up just like the last bits before the uh, Christmas party was getting together. So you'd have the film ready, and did, I just said hi to Dunn. Dunn said hi to me. I don't know. The guy seemed pretty cool, and he said hello. I was like, you can tell a lot when someone says hello, like like yeah, hi, or like or hello, or hey, something like that, or yo. You find out who the cool people are and who the losers are, and and Dunn. You know, me and Dunn met at the Tacoma Sobies. You know, I just got hired, uh, and I was like, "Hey, can I can I work in the the deli department?" And they were like, "No, you're a fucking idiot. Uh, only like the cream of the crop, only the best employees we have get to work in the deli department." And I look over, and it's Josh Owen is in the deli department, and he's got the meat slicer. And he's going to town on some shaved Montreal smoked meat, you know what I'm saying? Like, and he, there's orders coming in too. He is like sweating bullets. I think where I really, really met Alexander Dunn was in the deli, where we chopped, sliced, and shredded cheese for the Sobeys employees and customers. And I got to be with Dunn a lot. People are like, can I get two or three? Can I get two or three games at a and um, he's like really freaking out. But then from the deep freeze, I see like it opens as if the gates of heaven are opening in front of me. And it, 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 you know, the steam's coming out from the, the cold air and it's Alex Dunn coming out of the deep freeze, eating a pizza he probably stole from the deli on his lunch break. Uh, and it was just like magic. Man, this guy shaved meat like nobody I've ever seen before. Uh, it was just incredible. And I said, you know what, I gotta meet this guy. So I gave him his bus my business card and he hit me up on LinkedIn. Uh, and he was like, hey, do you wanna be friends? I'm not really interested in a professional relationship. And I said, well, I mean, that's f pretty lame, but okay, I guess I'll settle for second best. And I got to realize just how much of a wonderful little, he is, how much of a wonderful little, you know what that man is. And I actually got to talk to Alex for, <laughs> we did like six hour shifts, seven hour shifts. Like what, what can I say about Alex Dunn that hasn't already been said? Yeah, Dunn, I, fir I first met him at the quarry. He was just down there chucking rocks around. I said, bud, 
What's up, man? So we all sit down, um, and I didn't know anybody. You know, I was a little, I was a little weird back then. You know, I got some crazy hair. Um, so I, I look at them and I'm like, "Hey guys, uh, my name's Zach. Nice to meet you." Uh, and they turn around and they got full hockey gear on, uh, and then they just cross check me right in the throat. And I'm, I'm on the ground now, right? It's super funny. I know I'm on the ground with a little bit of blood. <coughs> it's a little. <coughs> it still gets me sometimes. Um, and they start kicking me, and they start calling me a puck bunny, uh, and they say Nathan McKinnon's going to kill you in your sleep, and then they go and sit back down. Love those guys. Oh, geez, me and Don, we go, we go pretty far back, actually. Uh, I was at my uh, favorite restaurant probably five or six years ago now, uh, Ralph's Place. I think it, it shut down pretty recently, but I was there, and uh, there was just there was this dancer, and he was just working the rod up there for dollar bills. And uh, his his body was so thick, so luscious. I knew I wanted a piece of that, you know. So I, uh, yeah, I hit him up. I got a private dance, and here we are, best friends ever since. Yeah, Dunn and I were uh, twin sisters. I uh, remember from an, an early age, we we enjoyed each other's company greatly. Always frolicking in the fields and. Uh, in search of various dead small animals or dead small humans uh, and poking in our fingers to their soft and decaying flesh in order to find what we called trinkets. Really, it was just small bits of their bones that were pliable enough to tear off. Oh, how I met Dunn. Oh, well, I was sitting at home this one time doing what I do at home one time and I hear this noise outside the window. I look out the window, this car comes driving through Dunn steps out, he broke my whole wall, and I'm like, hey, you broke my whole wall. And he goes, aw, oh, buddy. And he backs the car out like a good man does. I never saw him again. It's so funny because when Dunn and I first met, I actually didn't really like the guy that much. Um, I used to see him in the hallway all the time with Lucas and Moore and uh, that big group of friends, and everyone else was really cool. It was just, it was just something about Dunn. I just, I just don't, I don't know, I didn't really like him. And, um, I, I think the reason is, it's kind of silly, but I think the reason is that uh, the only thing I knew about the guy is that all he would do is draw pictures of frogs having sex, and I just thought that was really strange, but it was then when I found out that he drew uh, pictures of a lot of different animals having sex, like goats and uh, snakes and uh, otters, uh, then I realized this guy is really multicultured, and I really should give this guy a second chance. I wanted to go into the family business and study the dark arts. Uh, but Don, he, uh, he wanted to be a programmer, or whatever the fuck he is. And, uh, that didn't sit well with Father, as he was the high priest of the Dark Church. And that's when the locking in the cellar began. And, you know, it's, it's tough when you hear your, your twin sister going through that much anguish. It's, it's tough because it, it, it's annoying and uh, you, you just don't want to listen to it. That's when I started to pee on his computer almost daily. I mean, if Dunn was going to interrupt my invocation study and my blood rituals with his meek little cries that he hadn't been fed in four days, then I, I just don't see why I shouldn't pee on his computer. I mean, he was hardly using it anyways because he was locked in the cellar without it so often. I'm a good sister. The interviews went fantastic. I learned so much about the man that I never knew before. But if there's one person I know probably knows Dunn better than anybody, it's Nick. Nobody's involved more with the Christmas video and the Christmas party and the whole Christmas spirit than Nick Jones. So, got myself an interview with him and, well, things didn't really go as I expected them to. So tell us about how you and Dunn kind of formulate the Christmas party every year. I don't. He just invites me because he feels bad or that I fucked it up. What do you mean you fucked it up? Uh, I fucked it up. Billy Backentine's first invention is right over there. So every morning I get up, I get a glass of milk. I drink it. 
And why are you asking me these questions anyway? Why does it matter what I'm doing? I thought we were talking about Christmas. I didn't. I didn't ask any questions uh... like that. Look, do you, do you have any idea what it feels like to have every molecule in your body torn apart? I mean, it, like, see this stuff here. It's it's painful. I I am the embodiment of pain. I have. Oh, okay, so we're not talking about Christmas. You want to know what I do? You want to? You know what I've been doing for the last year? Uh. Hey, uh, Dad, are you done with the computer? Cause I'm feeling particularly horny right now and would like to beat the absolute fucking shit out of my penis. Okay, okay, seriously, like, you can't, you can't tell anybody about this. Um. I'm 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 working in uh in, in, in quantum physics and uh in science now. Um I figured out that if you actually gather enough speed, uh you can you can jump to parallel universes. I, I built speed up for, for twenty four straight hours. I actually pissed myself to um to achieve this, but I I figure out that there 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 is more to this than you think. I was hanging out with Zygarde seventeen the other day. He's actually the keeper of this of this universe. He makes sure we're okay, and uh, he he fucking hates Dunn. He that guy, I I don't know why we're still talking about this. What's it like to be Alex Dunn? Well, that's a really good question because in Parallel Universe 37, it turns out I actually am Alex Dunn. Uh, fun fact: it's not that great. Um, Christmas party, trying to plan that shit, fucked up. And yeah, as Alex Dunn, like me as Alex Dunn, I fuck it up too. So I mean, he's not alone on that one. You and you and Dunn hang out a whole lot. Dunn? Yeah. No. No, that guy doesn't want anything to do with me these days. Really? What happened? I've just been... Oh, you get so caught up in these other endeavors. And Dunn's a, Dunn's a smart computer now, so he doesn't need me. So we're working on this new program. Uh, so the way it works is every time I... I, I find something new within uh, time travel. And um, al alternative universes. I, I like to go in. I like to... Um, Record it, jot it down, um, per se. Yeah. Um, so lately, <clears throat> it's been getting it's been getting off the chain. Check this out. I don't think anybody has seen this before. It's absolutely insane. It's absolutely insane. Um, it's called Twitter. Uh, back in high school, Dunn was actually my high school bully. Um, until one day he, uh, he 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 caught it. He caught a whiff of my fragrance. He noticed I I, I smelled like Canadian classics and um, and uh, Budweiser. So uh, eventually he you know he he lightened up on beating me a little bit. You know those roller backpacks? Yeah, I had one of those. He used to kick it over every day. And you know like the like the double handle. He somehow managed to fit that entire thing up my ass. You're playing the shitty fucking Chrono Trigger Steam port. Fuck you. That thing's a piece of shit. Like actually, like the that was a terrible they port. It. Did they? They fixed it. Do they fix it? Yes. So like the show it to me. Show it it's to really me. It's really sick now. Show it to me. Cause last time I saw this thing, it looked like Garbo. I guess it did fix it. Definitely looks better than when I last saw it. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have yelled at you. I I don't understand how you would even say that name in front of me. Do you even know what that means? Uh, Alex Moore is more than a uh, a person, an entity. And no, before you ask, there's absolutely no interviews with Moore across this whole thing because honestly, I think they're too important for this. Um, but if you want, I can I can read you a couple of my favorite tweets um, from uh, Moore's account recently. Uh, just one second. Um, <clears throat> uh, you come to me on the day of my daughter's wedding and ask me for a DM? No, no, so you have the whole thing wrong. See, the way it works is Cloud has the black materia and Sephiroth wants to get to- oh. I got Uber Eats to the house. Um, he's at the front door. I'm just gonna go get that. Yeah, just I'll be, I'll be, I'll just be. It. Mm. 
This isn't working. I figured since I clearly wasn't gonna get anything usable out of Nick, I figured I could at least get him to maybe drive me around to some of Dunn's favorite locations and learn about him that way. Maybe if we went to the right place at the right time, it could probably jog Nick's memory. And luckily, that's exactly what happened. This is where Dunn was born. It's the greatest place on Earth. Now, in the Dunn family tree, the firstborn has to be uh, has to be birth in, in McDonald's, and that's where where Pat uh, Pat was actually uh, born in, in the in the ball pit. Um, but Dunn was here, and that's why Pat is buffer, but Dunn is stronger. I remember when Dunn first told me he loved Mary Brown's. He was the first person I ever met who actually liked this restaurant as much as me. Because yeah, fucking idiots like Lucas Mancini will be like, ah, Mary Brown's is gross. It's not. It's good. It's dope. And Dunn knows what's up. What? Uh, oh shit! So here I am, down here, where it all happens. Toast is ready. And then right there is where we filmed all the green screen stuff. Uh, you know, <laughs> the drum kit. I remember we used to move the drum kit in there every time we wanted to film, but I guess it kind of got all cleaned up now. But yeah, this is where all the magic happens. Anyways, so he used to come over and he'd have, he'd have uh, chain smoke offs with my father. And uh, they, they'd see who could, who could smoke the most. Um, eventually, Paula and, and, and uh, Jit, uh, you know, they, they figured out what was going on, so they, they told me he wasn't allowed to come over anymore, but, uh, you know, he, he, started, he started inviting me over again, you know, uh, a couple, a couple uh, months later, and he, he, just, he just used to get me to bring the cigarettes to his house. It turns out there was a lot more to Dunn than I ever could have imagined. He's not just a friend of ours, but a human being of cultural significance. Knowing this, I had to pry further. I got everybody back together and dug even deeper to see what I could find out. So tell me your favorite memory with Dunn. Oh, geez. I'd say one time I was going over to hang out with Dunn and uh, he was just staring at his computer. He was, uh, I remember I, he was trying to open his email and I just thought, what a fucking idiot, man. So I showed him how to open his email and yeah, just basically how to use a computer so you could say, I started his career, which is a, you know, humble brag, but it's true. All right, so, funny story. I used to have a dog. So, I'm not as good at Smash at Dunn is, as Dunn is. He, uh, he's really good, and I just get kneed all the time and spiked all the time. Um, so, no, he wasn't really feeling like there was anyone who could really keep up with him, no one he could really practice with. Uh, so, uh, he found my dog, and he killed him. Uh, and then he, then he showed me, he sent me some pictures over iMessage, you know, we have the little group chat and stuff. Uh, and he said, if I don't get better at Smash, he's going to skin my cat alive too. So, uh, just like Dunn said, I know I, I started practicing. I'm, I'm a little bit better now, so I can kind of keep up with him. Um, and hopefully, you know, he doesn't kill my little uh, chunky princess. My fondest memory of Dunn, it's got to be grade 10 English, okay? We were chilling, chilling, you know, doing our thing, grade 10 English. Uh, you know, and Miss Inkpen comes by, and she gives me uh, uh, 110 on my English assignment on uh, Heart of Darkness, you know what I mean? Uh, and then she goes up to Dunn, uh, and he's, like, being all cagey with his paper. I'm like, Dunn, what's the matter, man? What's, what's wrong? And he's like, oh, I didn't get a good grade on my English assignment, and I'm like... What, what do you what do you mean? He's like I got a, I got sixty nine out of a hundred, uh, and I'm like Dunn, that's that's wild, man. Like you are so good at English. If I had to think, like Dunn's not great with computers, but definitely like in terms of like the English language, the dude's a wordsmith. Like every essay he knocks out of the park. So I was like, well, Dunn, there's got to be some sort of mistake. Maybe our papers got switched. And there was a note that said, see me after class with Miss Inkpen. So he goes and he he meets with Miss Inkpen after class, and Miss Inkpen's like, yo, Dunn, I've been playing. Persona 5 lately, and I'm really into like the teacher storyline. It's sick, it's my stuff, and you know what? I thought I wanted to do it IRL. Dunn freaks out, because you know, if there's one thing he doesn't like doing, it's breaking the law. So he somersaults, front flip, out the door, right? Right into the locker, busts his head open, but he's still running. It's pure adrenaline, baby. Mr. McIntosh is there, and he says, Dunn, where are you going? And he just says to Mr. McIntosh, bathroom! And so he's running, trying to get to the men's bathroom. Miss Apehead is, I don't know where she is. Mr. McIntosh is trying to catch up. You know what I'm saying? 
and you know what? I was also there. I just want to make that very clear that I saw all this playing out, and that's just got to be my fondest memory of Dunn. It just, he was graceful the way he ran. I don't really get to hang out with Dunn that much throughout the year, so obviously my favorite memories of him easily come from the production of each uh, Christmas video. And I think the funniest thing he ever did on set was, uh, it wasn't last year's, it was the year before one. It was uh, when we were on the beach, uh, the scene where the Evangelion unit fights the giant Nick, and, uh, and Dunn and Mor are there when Nick turns gigantic. And I just turn around and Dunn is is just buck naked, he just ripped all of his clothes off, and he starts peeing all over Nick and more. So I decided to film it because I thought it was really funny, but he made me delete the footage. He said, no one can ever know about this. Sorry, Don, I kind of spilled the beans, didn't I? Right there. So that actually uh, broke three ribs. Um, I was in the hospital, um, they were feeding me through an IV. Uh, actually, Dunn was feeding me as well. Um, this whole weird thing where uh, breast milk actually makes me feel a lot better when I'm feeling sick. So uh, Dunn actually provided that for me while I was under the weather, uh, knowing that he was the one that um, uh, caused this, this damage to me. Um, now, some, some of you may think that that's not actually me, that was the uh, other Nick, but I, I, can, I can assure you that was, it was definitely me. Yeah, you know, you're just an actor, just making a movie, playing a part. Mm. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I, I love I love Dunn. I love everything about Dunn. And uh, I just, just hope he's doing okay these days. Yeah, I uh, used to have a locker just right beside Dunn in high school. Looked inside at one time, it was just full of pears, and I was like, dude, those are going to start rotting. And he said, no, they're not. So my favorite memory with Dunn. Hmm. It would probably be Halcon, like 2013 I th or 2014, I think. We're in there, I'm having a great time. We got Warp Speed passes, won them on the radio, and I lose him. I, I look around, I don't see him anywhere, and I'm, where did he go? And then I just see him getting dragged away by these three furries, two by the arms, and one of them has his legs, and I, tr tr I try to run after him. The crowd was too thick, though. I couldn't get through them. It was like hours before I found him. I find him outside. He's like cold, shaking, and I, I, I he did like I, we didn't know what happened, and he just like he doesn't remember a thing. And I, I was not there for my friend, and I'm I feel bad for that. There was that time where we were uh, all getting together, and we we were going to a trap room where uh, you have to solve puzzles and stuff to escape the to escape the room, right? So basically, what happened was about halfway through. Uh, I think it was either the first or second room. Um, we heard Dunn start weeping because it, it's pitch black in there. Like you can't see anything, and we're like, "Dunn, Dunn, what's the matter?" And Dunn's just kind of crouched over in the corner. And he's like, "I'm taking a poop," and I was just like, "That's that's not how you solve puzzles. That's how you mess up pants." The day and night that we took it upon ourselves to clean the entire deli because all the girls at the deli they didn't they didn't want it they didn't want the place clean but Dunn and I we were in the deli it was Sunday night you know the sun Sunday and we said we're gonna work hard we're gonna work really really hard and we ripped apart that deli case we took off our aprons the same way knights take off their armor as they die when they fight. And we cleaned and cleaned and cleaned, and they didn't care. The girls didn't care, but we did the work, and that, my memory of Dunn, never fades from that day. Oh, I know that one. We were going out by the, uh, you know, the old the old haunted uh, basketball rink down by uh, Mumphy Gumfos, and uh, so we are like looking around the hallways, because it's all real spooky, right? It was like five o'clock in the morning. We're looking around the halls, we hear this boom. Boom. So I looks at him, he goes, I'm gonna go get it. And I'm like, you gonna go get what? He goes to get it. I'm like, done. Dunny. Done. Done. So I go around the corner after him, there's three ghosts there. Three of them, just standing there. And he's running full speed up at the ghosts and they fly away, it's just a couple of birds. Actually, my, my favorite my favorite memory of Dunn is, um, there, so we used, we used to have these sleepovers all the time and I, I used to have a, a, a top bunk. And um, Dunn would come over and he would stay the night and I think, I mean, 
you know, everyone's got kinks and stuff like that, but he just really liked cranking it on the top bunk. And I mean, like, you know, we're pretty close to each other, but I can just hear like the... I just knew he was going to town. So, I mean, you know, I, I, just, I, just, I just let him have fun. But, you know, sometimes I, I just think back of all the, the, the great um, times he had up there, and it just, it just fills me with happiness. I'm just happy to know that he could, uh, he could do that in my house. I, I feel honored. So when I say the word Christmas, what about done comes to mind? What, 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 what word was that? Christmas. Um, one more time, Hemi. Christmas. Yeah, sure. Yeah, um... Sorry, you, you explain to me what Christmas... Chris, Chris, Christmas? Christmas morning. Open my present. What? Do I, what is it? Nothing but Guitar Hero 3. The only thing I wanted. Best game. I'm playing it. I message done. I'm like, dude, you gotta get over here. This game is sick. All the songs rip. Slow ride. Miss Murder AFI. He comes over. He's playing it. We're having a great time. And I'm like, man, you're doing sick. And he's he's feeling hot. He's feeling spicy. He decides to go for a guitar spin. I'm sitting there. I'm like, this is gonna be amazing. It was like slow motion to me when I was sitting there goes around his shoulder, goes around the back, comes back to the front, he's ready to grab it, strap snaps off, directly into the PS2. What a bastard. Yeah, Dunn's just got Christmas in his blood, and I don't even know if he has any blood. Um, okay, so, my favorite part of the Christmas party every year at Dunn's house is that he never invites me. Uh, he actually makes specific instructions not to let me in the house. Uh, so every year I gotta find a new costume or a new way to get in the house, uh, so I can come and hang out with all my friends, uh, even though Dunn doesn't really want me there. Last year, uh, I stayed under, uh, Paula and Jim's bed for a whole week, and then once the party started, I just came out and got the party with everyone else. Crazy, right? I love you, Don. He's sweeter than sugar bush ham and more Christmassy than the cherry wood ham. I know every year during Christmas, this was before I started celebrating Christmas, before my family started to be like, oh, you know what, we should try that Christmas thing out, see what that's all about, what the craze is, why everyone's hyped up about it. With, uh, with Don, I know that depending on if you're good or if you're bad, he'll come to your house and if you're good, you get a sick high five and a copy of Blinks. But if you're bad, you get a basketball to the face. I got Blinks. Done and Christmas and sweet and are the same three things in my mind because they're so sweet and they work in the hot kitchen with the... Mm. Done is the embodiment of the holiday season. In this house, we don't celebrate Jesus Christ. We nailed Dunn to the cross. I would say one time, Dunn invited me over for a Christmas Eve, so I, uh, I walk in a little early, and I see him and doing some uh, Mr. Claus, Mrs. Claus roleplay, if you know what I mean. So I left, and that's engraved in my mind every Christmas. Oh, Christmas and Dunn, I mean, those two just go, because, you know, it's the one thing that Christmas with Dunn, you you know, it's, um, oh, it, you know, it, it means so much to me, and I think to him as well, Christmas and Dunn, it's just like together, they did the, um, you know, the Christmas. It's really easy to associate Dunn with Christmas because of the Christmas video every year, but Dunn actually uh, has a lot more coverage when it comes to the holidays. There's actually a, a version of um, Konica with Dunn where instead of lighting the eight candles, you light eight little Dunns on fire and watch them scream in pain as they uh, burn alive. Uh, there's a Dunn Kwanzaa. My favorite is Dunn Festivus where instead of the uh, aluminum pole, you just get a Dunn, a big Dunn in the middle of your living room and everyone takes turns uh, pulling his pants down. And uh, Christmas and Dunn how they relate to me is, uh, I remember every year Dunn's got this tradition where, uh, you know how Mario goes into Karibo's shoe? Uh, well, Dunn would get a really, really, oh, thank you, thank you. Um, Dunn would get into a really giant sock, like a, like a human-sized sock, and hang himself up on the wall. Uh, and then he would be like, for this Christmas, I'm the gift. I didn't give you any gifts. I'm the present being friends with me. Um, like a giant stocking. Uh, and that really pissed me off.
Hey, uh, can one of you guys get that? Yo, Nick. Welcome. What's up? My homie. Uh, Nick, did you check over the documentary? Is everything cool? Uh, yeah, there's actually... I went over everything. Um, there is something you're gonna have to look at, though. What is... is, is the information, like, inaccurate or something? No. Everything is... 100% accurate. Uh, I think there's actually just a, um, like a, like a, like a glitch in the, in the file format. I think something may have gotten messed up in, uh, like, uh, post-processing. Uh, well, I'll take a look at it. Um, what's... What, what is it? Okay, well, first things first, I, there's this picture of Goofy holding a gun that I can't really seem to close out. Control, I've, I've tried hitting this. Control W. Oh, okay. So what's wrong with it? So right here, I noticed, well, everywhere, I noticed you censored the word Christmas. No, I didn't. Like, I understand how that could be, like, a funny thing, like, haha, Christmas is a bad word. I didn't, oh, I didn't oh, do oh. that, though. Um, play it back, show it well, to me. Well, here, launch. Go here and... I know every year during before I started celebrating Christmas, before my family started to be like, uh, you know what, we should try that. <laughs> See what that's all. I didn't do that. That doesn't sound like like a deliberate censor. That sounds more like a like audio corruption, like a glitch or something. Well, it sounds to me like when I'm trying to watch Teletoon after dark and I just want to hear Peter Griffin say the freaking f word, but they're yeah. just going. Mm. Yeah, well, it's that's. Nick, I think what happened, you got me to make this documentary as a cover-up for what happened last well, year. Well, I'm so trying think, to fix everything that we've done. Clearly, there's more fixing you need to do, because if, if the word Christmas is disappearing, I think Christmas... Nick, you need to fix this. Like, Christmas is fine this year, but it's fading. You got, you got some work to do, bud. Hey, boys! Is everything okay over there? Zach, I'm gonna have to build up speed for 365 days consecutively if I ever want to reach a parallel universe that could even have a remote, any chance of saving Christmas again. And that is definitely something you'll have to wait for for the next couple of years. I don't know if you'll ever see the conclusion of this or not, but I mean, you know, you're gonna find out eventually, won't you? <laughs>